Well, now I'm joined in the studio by the Middle East analyst Marco Vincenzino, who's been following events in Turkey with some interest. Very good evening to you, Marco. Well, he's said to be corrupt. Uh, he's said uh, to have, on the sidelines, been responsible for killing people. He's muzzling the press. Uh, they voted for stability, but are they going to get it? Stability, if you look at it in different realms, you have for your political, uh, economic, Political and economic are two separate. In terms of security, also uh, regarding the conflict in Syria. So, if we look at political stability, they've won overwhelmingly. It's one party rule. So, in terms of parliament, you have that stability. In terms of political slash security, in that sense, stability depends where in the country. Because if you're looking at the southeast of the country in the Kurdish areas, if President Erdogan and his party do not do an effective outreach to the Kurdish community, there will be instability. And He's, last night, we saw some of it last yeah. night in the city of Diyarbakir, outbreaks uh, of violence. Yeah. So that depends on his ability to reach out. And obviously, the Kurdish community has to reach out on their own also. Yeah. And then there's the war in Syria. Yeah. And he needs, if he can, and right now the diplomatic process began in Vienna last mm -hmm. week. If he's flexible in terms of political transition in, in Syria and other things that he's been quite steadfast about, he needs to show more flexibility. If there's further spillover mm -hmm. from, from Syria into Turkey, that will create instability. So he needs his greater outreach and greater diplomatic engagement. Instability, I mean, straight away, I'm noting that he's saying the result sends a, a, a clear message, as he put it, to the PKK. He conflates the PKK with Kurds in the general sense. Yeah, I mean, he in that sense, he's very much, uh, it's a political issue, but he over-politicizes it mm. to the point where he presents it, in my opinion, in terms of black and white. Mm. And it's far more complex than that. It requires, it's far, far more nuanced. And, he, and But he says that for the ordinary voters. In other words, when you run a campaign, you run an election, or you win an election, mm. you have to speak to the masses. It's most effective to speak in terms of blacks and white. Mm. If you're at the negotiating table and you're trying to reach out, you have to put that type of politics aside and be more humble be more down to earth and to really engage in a substantive dialogue. Kurds uh, are very nervous just now. I'm just um, uh, looking for um, a quote here. Um, one man was saying outside a, a, a tea shop that uh, how can this be? How is it possible that um, Erdogan can win after uh, what he's been doing over uh, the past few months since June? And uh, he doesn't think the Kurds have a chance now. The Kurdish party uh, upended Turkish politics on the last election on June 5th, winning 13 percent. They stunned the establishment and deprived part of the reason why they deprived the AK party, Erdogan's party, mm. of single party rule. Now, uh, the party dropped three percentage points from 13 percent to about 10.4. Yeah. And so the part of the reason, in my opinion, is the fact that after the October 10th suicide bombings in Ankara that killed over 100 people, normal political campaigning practically ceased. No more rallies were held, and the, a lot of the parties, particularly the smaller parties like the Kurdish party and all of them across the board, were not able to have rallies, to do outreach, and to galvanize their base. In my opinion, that it's not saying that it, it totally impacted the result, but it definitely had some impact on the result. You can you can maybe debate, the, the, debate mm. the extent to which it impacted the result, but I think inevitably it did have some. How does all this speak to national unity, though? I think in terms of national, Turkey remains a polarized country at home, and it has fraught relations abroad with many of its traditional allies, mm. whether it's in Europe with the migration crisis or with the U.S. in terms of the war in Syria, whereby the U.S. priority is the defeat of ISIS. Oh, right. The Turkish priority all along has been basically the, re the, the removal of, of uh, Bashar al-Assad mm. and then and preventing the Kurds from getting a state in the north. And the U.S., the only uh, reliable partners that the U.S. have been able to find on the ground as a fighting force is the, the Syrian Kurds, the YPG, which have affiliations with the YKK historic so for him, he basically says, we don't want it. We, you're doing business with terrorists. Americans think otherwise. And sure. it's going to take a while to work out. Let's uh, look at the vote again then. European election uh, monitors raising an eyebrow. Let's uh, listen into what uh, they had to say. But for me, it's clear that the process was not fair. The elections were free because freedom means that you have a different, you have a diverse choice of, of the spectrum of political scale. But it was not fair. The competition was not fair, and that's why it also shouts, sheds some doubts, some shadows over the result. 
So a deeply polarised society is still, even although all these calls for stability uh, won him the election, one would argue. Uh, he has the opportunity now. This half, the country is evenly split, mm. half for him, half opposed to him. Mm -hmm. He can either go forward judging and being the president of half the country. Statesman. And in order, if he wants to rise to the level of being a statesman, which mm. he has not done yet, and to reach out to the other half of the population, he has to do so effectively in action, not just in word and not just in rhetoric. Okay, Marco, thank you very much indeed thank for you. that.